You're listening to Let's Talk About Fatherlessness with host Sean Tice, where we talk about leading fatherless families to the Heavenly Father. Hey, welcome back to Let's Talk About Fatherlessness. My name is Sean Tice, and I'm excited to have my friend, Pastor Jason Kiefer. It's great to have you with us today. Good to be here. Good to be here, Sean. Now, Pastor Jason, we met, I, I came to your church. I met with the former pastor. He brought me into your church and we shared about it. We became one of your missionaries and just kind of given the quick, quick story. And then you and I met, you and I met there whenever I was speaking at your church, probably about four years, three, three years ago, four years ago. Um, I think it was pre-COVID. I'm not sure, but it was either 2019 or maybe it's 2020. Yeah. 2019, and we were on our Hope for Fathers American National Tour, and we got to come to your church as one of the, I think, the 89 churches we went to, and just we were thankful to be there. And so you and I met just a little bit there, but then you you eventually took the church over. You're the you're the senior pastor now, and we got to come to your church recently and and share our ministry again. And you told us about an event you were having, but before we jump into that, I want to tell us about yourself. Tell us about your ministry. Yeah, yeah. So. Uh... My wife and I, we've been on staff here since 2018. We've been in full-time ministry since 2006. And uh, the Lord brought us here in 2018. I came on as a youth pastor and uh, and then eventually moved up to more of an associate pastor role. And uh, then through transition uh, in August of last year, the church voted me in as the senior pastor. And so um, we love it here at Astatua Baptist. There's no place uh, like Astatua Baptist right here in Central Florida. And uh, God's been good to us, and uh, we love reaching out to people. We love uh, being a blessing to people and a help to people. And my wife and I, we've um, we have three kids, three children that we've adopted, and uh, we love our kids and thankful for that. Uh, but we're we're thankful to be able to serve Him in ministry. He's been so good to us, and uh, just to be able to be part of the kingdom and part of the work and and working with uh, you know people like yourself uh, is a pretty amazing thing. So yeah. That's great. That's great. And so, yeah, we're thankful to get to know you guys a little bit too. When we were, we were there last time and uh, we just, we, I love your heart for these families and for the fatherless. And so I just wanted to, the reason why we are having you on today is to talk about what you guys are doing there. You're doing some unique things, some, some things that are uh, just really powerful. Now, before we dive, dive into this, tell us about your single mom ministry. You started a single mom ministry, um, like a, a, a group that meets up every week. Can you tell us about that a little bit? Yeah, so um, we originally started it uh, in the spring of, of this year, earlier in the year, and uh, just because of the way we were transitioning in the church, and uh, it pro- probably wasn't the best time to kind of get it going. Um, we we had some single, we have some single moms in our church that we were already ministering to, and uh, we also have a school that we we have some single moms uh, that we try to minister to there. So uh, because we did it, you know, going kind of in the spring and going into summer, kind of everything falls, you know, just kind of a ministry kind of takes a detour. So we kind of relaunched it in the fall of this year. And uh, it's it's been a, a good success. We'll, we'll range anywhere from two to three to five or six moms on a Wednesday night. We do it on Wednesday nights. And um, we have a, a lady in our church uh, who moved here from Texas about a year ago, actually. And her son's been going here for years. And uh, she raised him as a single mom. And so naturally, she has a huge heart for uh, uh, for this ministry. And she's been a huge blessing and so been a great help to these ladies and, uh, and to their families. And so um, through that, uh, you know, we're always looking at different ways to be a blessing to people through the different ministries. Um, so that's how we came about the single moms event. But, yeah, we've only the, the single moms group that meets on Wednesday night, as I guess you would say, officially been going since the. Uh, first of September of this year. And that's great. And, and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for churches all over the country to do these. Uh, wh- why did you see the importance of that to do a single mom ministry? Well, you know, I guess for me, um, we have a couple people in our church we've gotten close to and we watch them. You know, we uh, have one lady, uh, she's actually on staff with us. She actually came into our church uh, when she was uh, 16 years old mm-hmm. and pregnant. And uh, she was actually at another church, and and they didn't feel like they could get the help they needed there. I was a youth pastor at the time, and uh, when she came in, and I remember our senior pastor sitting down with me saying, "Hey, uh, we have this family coming in, six year old. Um, she's gonna have a child. She's you know, she's pregnant. And, uh, we're gonna be a blessing to her and a help to her. And of course, I we're always on board with stuff like that. 
And so watching her up close and just the um, the burdens that she carries, you know, I watch my family come in in the morning to the office and, um, you know, mom and dad, we, my wife and I, we work together in ministry and our kids, they go to school here. And then I watch Rebecca as her name. She comes in and um, kind of see some of the struggles up close, you know, that helps us to see the importance of, of being a help and a blessing to these moms to help carry the load, um, if you will, to step in and, and be a blessing. And so through that, um, my wife and I has always had a heart uh, for people who who just uh, need help carrying their burden. You know, that's that's what ministry is all about, is helping people uh, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. And so we feel it important um, to be a help to them, to, to moms and to their kids, uh, to the whole family, you know, to be what we can. So that's that's really our heart to help bear, carry their burden. That's great. And, and have you seen now you I, to go back to rewind a little bit, you guys did a, um, the Christmas event last year and that, that was before you started your single mom group. What brought that on? Like, what, why did you decide to, to do that? What was, what was the driving factor in that? Yeah. So, um, every other year we switch off between a missions conference and a, uh, what we call love work. And so, uh, our missions conference here will bring in missionaries, you know, for the month of November. Uh, and then on the opposite year, we'll do things within the community. Uh, for example, last year, we also went to the 911 call center and we provided every shift with a meal, catered meal, and ministered to them that way. Uh, we'll do things with the fire department. We'll do things out in the community, hands on, you know, just showing them that we love you. We want to be here for you, be a blessing to you. And so in the process of planning that, uh, it was just in a staff meeting. We just started talking, throwing out different ideas to keep us from just kind of getting in the rut of doing the same thing every time we do this. And mm -hmm. uh, single moms came up and we knew we could pull from the school. And uh, we just, we thought, man, got to talking about it and what an awesome opportunity. The other thing is every year um, we were doing, uh, I guess, like an angel tree where we'd buy, buy gifts for people in the community and they could sign up and, you know, we'd provide gifts and, People in our church buy these gifts. We'd have a tree set up in the lobby and they could grab a name and, you know, like that. And it's really cool to minister to the kids. It's, I mean, it's awesome. It's phenomenal. But as we got to looking at those two things together, I, the, the, it came up in the discussion, um, you know, who ministers to the mom, right? Yeah. I mean, we're ministering to the kids, which is a huge blessing to the moms. But yeah. nobody's really just taking a hands-on approach and saying, hey, let's take these moms. Let's get them together. Let's pamper them for an evening. Uh, let's have a nice dinner. Let's provide them with some nice gifts themselves, you know? Um, and so it kind of came out of that and it's just growing from there. That's so great. And it's actually interesting. I'm speaking at a angel tree in Pennsylvania uh, tomorrow night an angel tree Christmas experience. That's kind of, that's neat how it, came, it okay. becomes birthed out of that. Now, did you still work with Angel Tree too? Or did you just kind of just do your own thing completely? No, we just did our own. It was our own. Uh, we, we had a bus ministry. When I first came on staff here, um, you know, we were, I'm going to say probably 40, 40 kids, 30, 40 kids every Sunday morning, we'd bring in on bus ministry. And um, so that always gave a good outlet. You know, we was, always had direct contacts with people that we could be a blessing to. So it was really our own thing. It wasn't actually through Angel Tree. Okay. Um, I guess that name just kind of gets tagged to it. Um, so it was, it was more on our own. That's great. And then, so let's, let's unpack this event then. So uh, just to talk about it, cause I really want churches to see this. I actually was going to blog about it last year. I was told a little bit about some of the things that went on. I saw some of the pictures and stuff like that. And it's just an incredible event. So tell us about, um, why don't we start with last year? Because I'm sure you made some changes for this year. So tell us about last year, how that mm -hmm. one went. Yeah. So last year, um, you know, we didn't, had never done it before. So I had no idea what to expect. Uh, I think we had originally 20, 20 moms registered and 12 or 13 showed up, I believe. And of course, you know, uh, you know enough, you've worked in this ministry enough to you factor in a single mom trying to to carry a family. There's so many unknowns that come up on a Saturday evening or, you know, you plan to do this, but it doesn't always happen. So we kind of learned a little bit how to navigate that. Um, last year, we had uh, we had a guest speaker come in. Um, Really, the whole idea behind the event is to give moms a place where it's not full of entertainment, full of stuff, but it's just a place where they can relax, know that their kids are being taken care of, 
chill out. I mean, the meal, so we feed, uh, we feed them prime rib and chicken. Uh, we have a guy come in from our church and he bought all the meat and smoked it all. And I'm a very nice dinner, extremely nice dinner. Uh, we serve them and everything. Really, they they just come in and sit down and we take care of them. That's the whole idea is we just want to take care of you. Um, we have strategically placed some of the ladies from our church within the dinner, too. So it just gives them fellowship and community, you know, to sit down and talk with people. People can be an encouragement to make connections as well. Uh, last year, we had a, a guest speaker was the uh, one of the single moms from our church who had just went through um, and just 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 a really bad situation she has two boys and now since then she's gotten married Hmm. and she actually served this year but she was our guest speaker last year uh we have some uh, we had a piano player come in and just do some uh soft entertainment as they were eating and things like that um really honestly we didn't have like this huge agenda it wasn't like about a ton of entertainment um to where when they leave they feel wore out you know uh, or overwhelmed we just wanted them to be, be able to relax, you know, and know, hey, look, we have a friend in Nassatua Baptist Church. You know, if you ever need anything, we're here for you. We love you. These front doors are always open for you. Some of these ladies go to other churches. Uh, some of them don't go to church at all. And um, we just want you to know we're here for you. So at the time of the event, we also, uh, in our gymnasium, our kids ministry put on basically an event for their kids. Mm-hmm. And so up to 12 years old, uh, we provided entertainment for them, supper. Uh, we provided, um, they made a craft, like an ornament for mom to give to her. Um, so that was pretty cool. Yeah. And uh, we provide nursery and all that stuff too, full That's staffed cool. and everything. And so, yeah, it's a, it's pretty, pretty amazing. So, but that was our first year. And then this year, uh, one of the things we got a better handle on was uh, getting commitments from mom. So we weren't like, all right, we're expecting this many. Um, but way less show up. It was less than we expected, but it, we shrunk that gap, which I think next yeah. year we'll be able to shrink a little more. Um, cause there's a, there's a lot of work goes into it, you know, and, um, same guy provided the meat this year. It was pretty awesome. Uh, same thing. We did prime rib and chicken and uh, we just, I mean, it's, it's luxury. It's nice. I mean, we go all out. Uh, we just, we want it to be fancy, nice, elegant, um, yeah, it's uh, we had the, the the hit of the night was the dessert table. Uh, we had a chocolate fountain, and uh, man, the moms ate it up. They loved it. I'm sure. Um, the, and then their kids would come in later, and uh, so uh, that was pretty cool. And the guest speaker, ironically, was me this year. It wasn't I? Don't know how I got picked for it. And so, um, I'll share a little bit of my story. Um, my dad. Uh, I found out when I was 20 years old that my dad that I knew was my dad wasn't my biological dad. Mm. And so uh, I, I, don't, I didn't, hadn't really shared it with a lot of people up to this point, but I went for 20 years. I'm 46 now. So I went for 24 years and I never really had any explanation. I didn't, I mean, I love my dad. He's great, great guy. Um, and I, I guess that uh, kind of the way our family deals with things is kind of like, all right, it happened. Just tuck it away. Don't worry about it. So a couple of years ago, I went down and sat with my mom. And uh, so I said, hey, I need some, I need an ex, you know, I need some uh, explanation, you know, uh, give me some background in my story, you know, and uh, she did. And so I ended up finding out that uh, my dad, my biological dad uh, passed away when I was 20 and he was 40. Uh-huh. And so, you know, there was a lot there, you know, you're like trying to deal with all this information. Um, I guess that when I was about six months old, he walked out or Never really had anything to do with my life, had a chance to, but decided not to. And so for about three years, you know, my mom was raising me as a single mom. So I was able to share that um, kind of from the perspective of a child and and how the, you know, your story is your child's story, too. And though sometimes we try to protect our kids from the ugly, like sometimes the ugly and the hard parts of life, that's their story. You know, that and kind of sharing with them from the scriptures how how the Bible's full of um, stories that we look at and think, man, I wouldn't have put that story in there, you know, uh, oh, yeah. whether it's David and his issues or Jacob being a liar his whole life or whatever. And so I was just able to share from the perspective of a, of a, um, of their children, you know, don't be afraid to 
uh, bring them into their story and how God's going to use that, how God's going to use that. And so it was, it was pretty neat. Um, uh, we usually try to bring ladies in just because they probably relate to better to single mom. But um, it was able to make some good connections through that and uh, talk to some of the moms later. And so it was pretty cool. That's awesome. I'm sure that your story resonated with them and uh, that was good. Now, what is some of the, um, how do you handle the guilt? Let's, let's, let's kind of unpack the event a little bit. And then I, I also want to unpack your story a little more too, but like, yeah. to the event. So if you're talking to a church, you're telling them, Hey, this is how we set it up. What all, what, what, what did you add? Um, what would you say? Like, how do, this is how we did the gifts. This is how we recruited volunteers. What would you say? Yeah. So first thing first, obviously, we can come up with a budget and say, okay, this is what we want to spend. This will put us event. We're actually, it, it's weird that I, we even thought at the beginning of the year, we're going to be able to, because it's a pretty, so last year we had 15 moms, 20 moms were what we planned on. Uh, cost us about $7,000 to put it on. Uh, last year, we just had an individual, they just wrote a check for it. They said, hey, we want to pay for it. So like, All right, <laughs> that's great. Uh, so we, we've been going through a transition. When you transition pastors, you know, there's always a financial uh, impact on the church as well. So one of the things at the beginning of the year was, okay, how do we go through this? You know, a big ticket item like that, knowing where we're at budget wise. I mean, we've had to cut salaries. We've had to, um, you know, shift some positions around and stuff like that in the church. So first thing's a budget. And we came up this year, we, we scaled it back a little bit um, just because where we're at, we told the church we're doing it that way. I think it was at $5,000 is what it cost us. And so it, we kind of made a fun fundraiser out of it. Uh, we promoted that of uh, the beginning of uh, the middle of October. We started promoting that. Hey, um, putting it in front of them. These are the envelope. Grab an envelope. Put the money in the envelope. Stick it the offer plate. And so mm -hmm. people gave to that. They were pretty excited about the outcome of last year. So obviously the financial, you know, that's a big part of it. Then through the process, um, you know, the same individual that bought the meat last year came up to me. Hey, we're going to pay for it this year. Uh, my wife and I, we enjoy doing that. So, you know, cut down on that. Yeah. So we had people also at the same time bring in gift items to put in bags. So every lady got a bag. Uh, the value of the bag was probably, I think it was around $200 uh, for the bag. And so we give them this year, uh, last year, we could give a little more. I think last year we gave uh, $200 checks actually for each mom. Uh, this year we gave $75 uh, Target gift cards to the moms. And then a lot of items, uh, just lady pampering items, candles, you know, uh, just all kind of stuff they put in there, uh, blankets, just really cool. And, and they really do it up well. So a lot of that came in from volunteers, just people donating it, oh. which say, hey, we need this many of this item, this many of that item. So they would bring all that in. Um, volunteers, uh, we had some good volunteers last year. So we, we kind of went to them individually and said, hey. You know, you, can you help serve? We had uh, four ladies serving. Uh, it's fun, pretty cool. The lady that spoke last year, uh, the single mom that spoke last year, she actually served this year. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the first ones when she found out about it. So I want to be part of that, you know. Um, and then we um, we just pull in from like our nursery workers. Hey, we have this event going on. Can you help staff the nursery? Our kids ministry took care of the of the kids portion of it. So mm -hmm. it, and they just took it over. We just said, look, this is what we want. This is how many kids are going to have. Here's your budget. Take it and make it happen. And so they did. They just Our kids pastor went with it and did a great job. Uh, it really was. I think they told me we ended up with uh, 19, 21, 21 workers hmm. um, that night. That's, that's pretty, uh, you know, it's pretty, wow. it takes a lot of, a lot of hands. But uh, it went so smooth this year. Last year, I was so stressed out. You know how events are. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, you know, I mean, I was just, I was wringing my hands, stressed out. I, I don't, it was the Lord. Uh, it just, it went so smooth this year. It was amazing. The, the Saturday, last Saturday, um, you know, we were down here working at the church and just everything just seemed to fall in place and just went really good. Yeah. That's so great. Um, such a, such a wonderful event. Now, how long does the event go for an hour, two hours? So we start at five. Okay. And one of the things that I've figured out both years is they um, they're not getting there at five. <laughs> they're getting there anywhere from <laughs> four forty five to five forty five. Yep. And so that's happened both years. So there are some things we're going to do next year to kind of allow for that and adjust mm -hmm. for that. 
But having said that, uh, we didn't have a huge agenda. You know, there wasn't like we have this going on, this going on, uh, where everything kind of needed to be moving by five. Um, and we've done that intentionally because when those ladies come in, so this year when they came in, we had a cool photo op set up in the lobby where we'd take a picture with them and their kids. And uh, we would help get the, uh, if they had nursery age kids, we'd get them to nursery. Uh, if we had, uh, if they had older kids, we would uh, make sure their kids got where they needed to go. Some of the moms wanted to go with them and, you know, we're cool with that. And yeah. so, you know, that takes a little bit of time. Uh, so we ended up, we didn't start eating at five. Uh, kind of the goal was to start, you know, five ten eating. I think it was around five twenty. But it's a really, it's a nice atmosphere. It's a very elegant atmosphere, but it's also a very relaxed atmosphere. And so when those ladies come in, we're interacting with them in a comfortable way, just, you know, making them feel welcome and uh, kind of hearing their story. For some of them, we don't know. Some of them we do know, uh, kind of hearing their story. And so I think it was around 520. Uh, we started eating yeah. and uh, we didn't, um, again, it's a lot of fellowship. We do some fun things like we'll do like a top 10 um, a top 10, uh, list for a funny list for single moms, you know, things they go through and they can relate to. I think last year we had a, um, like a, a video, like a funny video, a, co um, a comedian, I don't remember who it was, um, kind of did a skit for single moms. It was like five minutes long or something like that. Just as people were coming in, uh, this year we had, um, a guy come in, he comes and does a Christmas concert. Um, his name's Kurt LeBeau. Uh, he's a blind uh, singer. So he comes mm -hmm. in. And he did, he actually sang and stuff while they were eating dinner and stuff. That was nice. Just gave a, a nice atmosphere. And um, then we'll do, um, once they, once, once everybody gets done eating and stuff, um, we'll, we'll kind of go into the speaking portion of it, which is pretty light on the front end. And um, the problem with me and humor is once I get started with humor, I find it hard, I find it hard to get off the humor. <laughs> and so, uh, so my wife has to help me regulate that. <laughs> Um, so, um, the speaking portion maybe was 15, 20 minutes. It's not real heavy. So I would say from beginning to end, I think it was five to, I think ladies were leaving between seven and seven 30, but it's just cause they wanted to stay and hang out. I mean, they, it was crazy. Like it, we, and we tell them, say, look, you, you stay your kids. They're good. We're not cutting it off. We just want you to stay and relax. If you want to stay and talk and just hang out. And they do. They just hang out. They hung out at that dessert table for about 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, and I know what you're saying about the, uh, the, the time we do it. We did in Las Vegas, we did a father's day event and you just never know. And even our single mom group every Wednesday, we never know what time when, when would show up. Um, and you right. couldn't, like, you couldn't count the attendance at, you know, right at the start time because there could be somebody show up 45 minutes late. You know, it's just, single mom's lives are a little, you know, a little hectic, a little crazy, and they're trying to do it all their own. And so that's, that's, I love how you guys are, you know, making, you know, ways to accommodate that. And I think that's really, really cool. Um, so have you had any good feedback from the single moms? Anything that you, from last year or this year that you'd share that good feedback? I heard, I heard some ladies trust last year. Is that, or is that this, or didn't some ladies could there was two year? kids last year that two did. Kids. And okay. Yes, there was one lady. There was, I believe, there was one lady that did. Uh, awesome. None this year that I've heard of. Okay, that's great. Um, though, last year. Yeah, the the feedback I remember so much from last year. Um, I just remember and uh, one lady. She just uh, she said we've never had anybody do anything like this for us, and she just kept yeah. saying that she was like, "This is she's like this is just awesome that we can just sit back." You know, because mom's lives in general, you know, I just look at my wife. I mean, from the time she gets up in the morning, the time she goes to bed, she's nonstop. Mm -hmm. You know, she's not, she doesn't stop. And, and I'm there helping her, you know, I'm there helping get the kids in line. I'm helping, Hey, we got to get out to the car. You know, we got to get out and get into the grocery store, you know, whatever. I'm always right there helping her with that. And, you know, I think my goodness, man, cause mom, they don't have that. You know, it's just, they're, they're doing it all on their own. You know, yeah. and for us, when we sat down and plan those evenings out, it's like, you know what, just make it as relaxing as possible where mom can just sit down and breathe and think, you know, and it doesn't have to be about doing a bunch of stuff. It's not a program. It really is just creating an atmosphere where they can relax. They feel love. They have they feel like they're making friends, uh, connections down the road. Um, and we tell them this. So, hey, 
Um, of course, we want you to come to church. We, we want all that. Um, but you may find out in six months down the road, you just need somebody. You need somebody mm-hmm. to talk to. You need a friend. Um, we want them to know that they're loved uh, by asking to a Baptist church. And we had some return moms. The one mom that went on and on last year, um, she was here again this year. And uh, in fact, one of the moms that came last year, um, she brought her daughter as also a single mom. And so mm-hmm. her and her daughter came this year. So that, that was pretty cool. Now, were there any additions to the church or it wasn't like anybody came to the church from that or not last um, year? Okay. No. no, not last year. Now we'll follow up. Um, I'm out of the office. I was out of the office on Monday and um, we'll, some of the follow up we're doing today will be just writing a hand, uh, a handwritten yeah. note to them uh, from Tanya and I, and uh, just saying how much, you know, we enjoyed having you and and just reiterating that we're here for you. We love, you know, um, there's some moms that we've identified, hey, it may be worth pushing a little harder on that and making a better connection with that, you know. Um, so there's some, you know, we try to identify that throughout the night, you know, or when we make connections. Um, we pulled uh, two to three. Three moms came from our school, which was pretty cool. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Where, First of all, where did you find the moms? And then um, what would you say to somebody that would say, well, why would you have the event then as a church if you're not going to bring, if they're not going to come to church? Uh, well, there are the two, two questions there. So the first one, how did you find the moms that came? And then okay. what would you say? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so finding the moms uh, really was uh, social media. Social media was a big, okay. I think most of our moms came from social media. Uh, so what mm-hmm. we do is we put it out, we put an event out on social media and you can, you can, um, nominate someone to be part of this event and so let's just say if i knew someone that was a single mom i would nominate them on the event give them the information we then contact the single mom and let them know and say hey you've been nominated for this event this is what the event's all about we talk to them about it things like that is this something you're interested in you know and uh most of the times they say yeah you know so that's one of the ways we do it uh you know we push um we push advertisement on paper through our school uh, emails and stuff like that. Facebook page for our school. We push that through there, letting them know about the event. Uh, and then personal contacts. There's people in our church who maybe work with someone. Uh, one of the ladies that was here th- last year and this year, uh, works with a lady in our church. And so, uh, she nominated her. And so, um, she's come both here. So that's pretty cool. And so, yeah, that's mm-hmm. how we get them in. Basically social media is the biggest way, uh, probably. Uh, the second to the second question, um, you know, what if they don't come to church? So I, I used to really fret when I'd have events if people didn't come to church. It'd bother me. Um, do, should we even have the event? You know, things like that. I've kind of gone away from that. I mean, I'm a pastor, so my heart is that people are in church. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to tell you, my heart is even more that people are loved with the love of Christ. Um, and what happens with that? I, you know, I just want to love them. Um, I, I think about Jesus. So Jesus is feeding. Uh, he's working ministry. He's busy working ministry. He's tired from the day, and he sees the multitude. And the Bible says, when he saw the multitude, he was moved with compassion. Mm. And so he ministered to their needs. Many of those people follow. Uh, some of those people followed him, but many did not. And so at the end of the day, you know, if we show the love of Christ. There's going to be some that it brings to a, a relationship with Christ, but there's going to be a lot that it doesn't. But at the end of the day, that's not, I can't, I can't bear that responsibility. And I tell the church that I'm like, guys, listen, do we want people to come to church? Absolutely. But the greater for me is that we want people to know the love of Christ. And through that, uh, we share the gospel. I shared the gospel uh, on, uh, on Saturday night. Uh, so they get a clear presentation of the gospel. Uh, we'll follow up with them and things like that. But I've kind of, uh, it used to, used to it would bother me if I had an event, if we had an event, there were 15 miles there and nobody showed up the next Sunday morning. I'd be like, well, what? Well, that was, you know, what was the purpose? I don't do that anymore. Um, I just kind of leave that on the Lord. We just want yeah. to minister to people. And that's a great attitude to have. And I just wanted to, because I know sometimes we, we put on events at churches and the people don't show up and it's like, well, if we gave the gospel out, then, you know, God worked and just let God, you know, water it, right. We've planted the seed. And so that's so, that's so, so good. And I appreciate you guys doing this for these families and just trying to encourage them and help them 
um, on their journey. That this is such an encouragement to single moms and fatherless individuals. Now, do you guys do anything for the kids, or is it more? It's more focused on the just just the mom. Do you guys do any gifts and stuff for the kids at this event? Yeah, yeah. So our kids ministry. So our kids ministry. Uh, they'll provide the each kid gets a each child gets a gift. Uh, they have a ton of fun. Uh, yeah. A night of fun. Usually, moms are wanting. You know, moms are ready to go. Kids are wanting to stay. <laughs> so, uh, so that's always pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, no, they get. We we have a ton of fun with them. It's it's oh. packed full of fun, and, and they get a they get a gift. Uh, we just kind of instead of focusing just on the kids, uh, taking this approach lets us focus on the moms and the kids. Which to me, like I told our church, like you want to bless a kid, minister to their mom, mm-hmm. right? Like you, you want you want, you want to influence a, a kid's life, minister to the one that's having to raise them and lead them and guide them every day. Like refresh them, yeah. and, and do something special for them, and, and that's going to have a huge impact on their kid. And so um, that's kind of the approach we've taken. I love that because that's what we're trying to do with these single mom groups, and we're teaching that to churches, saying, "Hey, if you can, I mean, we have an epidemic of fatherlessness in this country." And if we could reach the moms, the moms can disciple their kids then. If we can evangelize and disciple the moms, they can evangelize and disciple the fatherless kids. And what better one to do it and then their mom, right? I mean, I I love mentors and I think we should um, find Christian mentors. But one of the things that we've seen is we've, you know, we've been in over 200 churches. One of the things that moms would tell us is I can't find anybody to mentor my son or my daughter. I can't find anybody to mentor them. And so our thought is, well, if we can't find anybody, if we can't find Christian men that are rising up, and there are, there are Christian men that are doing that. There's different yeah. people that are doing it, but not every kid's going to get a match like that. And so what are, if you can just disciple that mom, you know, start there and maybe a man will come or maybe a, a mentor couple will come or a, a woman or something will help mentor that daughter. You know, maybe that'll happen, but men, disciple that mom, mentor that mom. And the, there's such a change could happen in that family, right? I mean, that's, that's kind of what you're, you're saying. And then also with your group, yeah. These could be these could be leads for your your single mom ministry, right? Yes, yes, yes. Now yeah. we push heavy on that. Our the lady that directs our ministry, our single mom's ministry, uh, she's one of the ladies that we just strategically place in there. And she, I saw her Saturday night. I think she spoke to every mom for, awesome. for a good period of time. And so, yeah, no, yeah, we definitely push that and draw them in. We had some commitments that'll be here or supposed to be here uh, on Wednesday night, and so that's pretty cool. Yeah. That's so great. And now I mean, yeah. I, I appreciate you sharing all the information about this event. And I, I challenge yeah. churches that are listening to this, you know, do this event. Is there anything else you want to say to pastors or churches that are thinking about doing something like this? Um, no, it's just, it's, it's not, not looking at, at the reward as immediate, you know, cause I think sometimes we, we think, okay, if I do this event, man, what's this going to do for the church? What's this for us? We just threw all that out the window. Like we want to be a blessing and help to people. We may never see the reward. You know, it may be uh, it may be them telling a story years down the road of how a church reached out and helped uh, their mom or helped them and their family. Um, I, th- I think sometimes for us, we, we kind of want to see the reward pretty quick. And really, the reward's not ours. It's, it's the Lord's for us. You know, we kind of look at it that way um, because it gets discouraging if you start looking for things yeah. and you're going to be like, well, OK, we had this many moms committed, only this many came. But two years in a row, do we still want to do that? Yeah, we want to do it, man. We're like we're excited about next year. You know what I'm saying? We're already planning and scheming for next year. Um, it, 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 it's, it'll be it's worth it. It's worth it. Amen. Okay, we only have about three minutes left, but I want to ask you, talking to the people that are listening, that they found out later in life about they were adopted, or just like you said, how did you handle that? Just share just a few truths about that because I think that's such a powerful story that you shared there. Yeah, so uh, I was 20 years old when I found out that my bio, my dad wasn't my biological dad. Um, I wish that I would have went to my mom immediately and said, hey, you know, uh, I need clarification on this. Help me out. And I didn't. You know, I just kind of bottled it up. Um, <clears throat> not to the point that I carried it around. I, I never, by God's grace, I never got angry, never got, you know, bitter, none of that stuff. I was saved when I was 22. So two years after that, I got saved. Um, for, for for about 20 years, I just, for me, for me, uh, my dad, who I call my dad, he's the greatest dad anybody could ever ask for. So I don't want to paint a picture like I didn't have a good dad. I had a great dad, phenomenal dad. 
but realizing that, okay, there's somebody out, out there that is my dad, where's he at, you know, what part of the country he's in, is this somebody I see on a regular basis, you know, all these questions mm-hmm. running through your mind. Yeah. Um, until I found out, I just, I kind of had to put that on the Lord. Uh, and just, for me, it was just a conscious decision to not go there because of what God had given me in my dad. And I rejoiced in that. A couple years ago, um, I started just within my heart having questions and stuff. And I realized, okay, at some point, you know, uh, it's going to be too late. You're never going to get these questions answered. You know, so I I called my mom, hey, let's sit down, let's have a discussion. We did. Uh, I found out who my biological dad was. Of course, then done research. And I I found out that he had had passed away uh, when he was 40, about the time that I actually found out everything. And so that did bring on some questions of, okay, so now I'm never going to know, you know, now there's no hope of really knowing anything. Um, you know, why, you know, why would someone abandon you? Why would someone leave you? Why all those questions come up? Um, and, and so I've just had to really honestly just consciously lay it on the Lord and walk away from Mm -hmm. it. I was just having a discussion with a, with a couple last night and trying to help them walk through some things. And I use that illustration. Uh, there are days where I have questions and think, well, what if, what if this would happen? You know, when I, when you see the verse, all things work together for good, knowing that the good is God's greater plan. I'm just thankful to be part of his plan. And you just got to make that, that conscious decision that I'm going to put it on the Lord. That's that's so good. That's so good. Maybe we'll have you on a future episode to talk about that more because I think that there's a lot of truth to that. A lot of things that could help other people. We have to wrap up. We're less than a minute left. Yeah. Just share where people can find your church and information about you. So yeah, askatobabistchurch.com. Uh, you can go in there. All of our information is there. We're located in Lake County, Florida, Central Florida. And a great place if you're ever coming through here. Uh, stop by and see us. We'd love to meet you. And uh, yeah, askatobabist.com. That's the place. Well, thank you, Pastor Jason, for being on with us today. We really appreciate it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode of Let's Talk About Fodlessness. We want to now challenge you to take the next step by either starting a single mom community group in your church or with your ministry, or by joining our network of God is My Dad churches and ministries. Isn't it a great experience to be able to start a single mom community group? Yeah, and it's just, if you talk to single moms, a lot of times what they'll tell you is, the one thing they're lacking is that community, just a group that they can go in and they know there's no judgment. You know, everyone may not have the same situation. Everyone doesn't know what they're going through, but they can go in and they know there's no judgment. And and it takes that kind of that restriction and that uh, wall down for them so that they can share and then that they can grow in Christ. And our single mom community groups are a wonderful ministry. If your church can start one, we'd love to have you. We can help you get set up. We have the curriculum and all the resources you need. If you can't start one, we'd love to have you start by by joining our network of churches and ministries, our God is My Dad network of churches and ministries, where you can get your church or your ministry on our map and people can find you and find find your ministry in your church so that they can get plugged into your church or ministry locally. So check that out. You can find all these resources at lifefactors.org. We have books, we have all kinds of content on there at lifefactors.org. Check it out today. <music>